everyone. This is the Untwisted Voice. Thanks for stopping by and watching my video blog. If you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? I'm trying to get up to a thousand subscribers. And with your help, I can make it there sooner than later. And thanks for stopping by. What I want to talk about, I want to talk about sobriety. What did I do in the beginning days of my sobriety? What did I do to get sober? What, how did that happen? Well, just to talk a little about what life was like before I quit drinking, about a week before, it was pretty crazy. I had a lot of cops chasing me. My ex-wife was a cop caller. She'd call the cops on me for anything. And I was loony, so I don't really blame her for calling the police. So the police, I was a little paranoid about police about a week prior. I was basically living on the street. I was unemployable, unemployable totally. I had anger, I had large, long bouts of depression and despair. Life was not going that great. Physically, I was about 145 pounds. I weigh about 105, I mean 105. I weigh about 205 pounds now. So I was about 60, 70 pounds underweight. I look like, bone, like a bone rack, to be honest with you. And life itself wasn't going that great. It really, really wasn't. People wouldn't associate with me. Life really, really effing sucked. It really, really did. And I remember being in a room by myself and having a second of clarity. You know, on all this crap going on, I had a second that it was at least came clear to me exactly what had to be done. You see, I was a full-blown alcoholic when I was 18 years old. I was full-blown alcoholic. I went to 12-step programs when I was 22 and I left. I wish I would have stayed when I was young, when I was 22. It took me six more years of punishment, of self-made brutality for me to get into recovery. And I was there at 28 years old in front of this mirror and I had a moment of clarity and I said to myself, Terry, whatever it takes, you need to clean this up. You need to do something about your life. Your life is absolutely crap. And a lot of it is because you are causing it. And I came to that conclusion. I don't know how, but I came to that conclusion that it was me causing it. I really didn't know how, but I knew something I was doing, like the resentments and the, the way I was handling life in general, being totally unreliable, a lot of things. So I made a commitment to myself the first thing I did is I made a commitment. My dad was in a 12-step program and he used to talk about 90 and 90. So I made a 90-day commitment just to stay sober for 90 days, just to stay off the booze without going too crazy was enough for me. My emotions were raw, everything was crazy about me, but I said to myself, I'll give it 90 days. Whatever happens to me in 90 days, I will remain sober despite of me. That's what I said, and I did that. And the second thing I remember thinking, in a, like I don't know if it was that very moment or the next day, within a few, maybe a 24 hours later, whatever it takes, I will do it. So I'll reach out, that's what I said. If I find somebody in a 12-step program, I'll ask them to be my sponsor. Because I knew about AA, I knew about AA and I knew about 12-step programs. I'll ask them to be my sponsor. So I did. He wasn't very good. He was kind of, wasn't that great at the start. He was kind of as, as crazy as I was, but nevertheless, I did that. I worked my steps. I got active. I went to therapy. I started listening to people who knew better than me. I consistently reached out. I said to myself, there's gotta be a better life than the life I'm leading. So reaching out, getting help, telling people the way I felt, telling people the experiences I was, I was going through with very early sobriety and hanging on and believing that these people knew better than I. So reaching out, getting help, and relying on other people was really important to me. So I needed to start forming a little community and I did that 12-step recovery program. And the third thing I did was I participated in my sobriety. I participated. If I felt depressed, if I was crying, if I was angry, if I was dating, whatever it was, I made sure that I made my recovery number one 
before my kids, before my ex-wife, before court dates, before family court dates, everything. I made my sobriety the number one thing on my list. I really did. And I kept pushing forward. I kept participating in my sobriety. And after about two months, I started to feel better. I started to feel more hopeful. Physically, I was feeling better. I felt a part of things. People in 12-step programs were asking me to do things for them. Things sort of evolved on their own, but I made a commitment to myself, despite myself, I will continue to move forward in my sobriety, in my well-being, in my recovery, because it was painful, it was hard, it was depressing, I was angry, I was always going crazy in early sobriety, but it hung in there and it was well worth it. I have 26 years of sobriety now, and that's the way I started. I got out there and I did something about my life. It seems to be easy now for me, but at the beginning, it was very difficult. It was very, very, very hard. I was damaged goods. There wasn't much going for me. There really, really wasn't. And I had an overwhelmed feeling that I was a victim. So the three things I did that were very key, I quit drinking and I made a commitment for 90 days. I reached out. I reached out, I found people who I could rely on to give me great advice. I went to therapy. So keep reaching out and leaning on people and it really, really helped. The third thing I did, I participated in my sobriety. I got actively involved in my sobriety despite of myself. And that's really important because I felt awful. I would go to programs and whatever and just cry or be angry or complain or feel a victim, but I kept going. I kept going and I was sober for another day. Every time you're sober, each day that you're sober, you're moving to a better place. You're recovering. It may not feel like that, but you're recovering because you're moving forward. You really are. Long as you're breathing, there is always hope. Get out there, participate. Your life will change dreams and hopes and wonders that you had about your life will come true. Beautiful things happen to people in sobriety. I've seen it, it's happened to me, and I want it for you. If there's any way, that any tricks that you use, not tricks, but anything that you did that was really significant to you getting sober in early sobriety, please share it below in the comments. If you have any questions about what I just talked about, or you need some advice or some direction, contact me and I'll get back to you. I really, really will. This is the untwisted voice of Terry G. Thanks for stopping by. Subscribe to my channel. And remember, sobriety is about one drunk talking to another one day at a time. Let's do it together. Let's form a great community and let's get sober and have a great life. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.